I'm Joe Wang, uh, chair of the nanoengineering department. So nanoengineering is engineering in the nanoscale, which is one billion of a meter. And I'll talk about two topics, two initiatives related to what's happened in the School of Engineering. One is the uh, new institute of robotic, and we will do robotic in the nanoscale, and then the new center on wearable sensor. So I'll start with the nano machine and nano robot. And this is very challenging, how to swim in the nanoscale. Everything is different, how to power the machine in the nanoscale, how to navigate, how to steer. It's different than in our scale. So in our lab, we are developing different uh, motors based on different propulsion mechanisms, both for in vivo biomedical application and in vitro diagnostic. Some of these are chemically powered. Some of them are magnetically or acoustically powered. And the goal is to address diverse applications, biomedical, fantastic voyage, security application, and environment application. So we'll start with this chemically powered motor swimming in the fuel solution. They are too small. There is no place for a tank. So they swim in the ocean using the ocean or the blood as the fuel, starting with this micro rocket. So this California nano rocket, they are only two micrometer long. Again, micrometer is one million of a meter. We make them by template deposition in the membrane. These are micropore of membrane. We deposit the polymer first, and then the catalytic platinum layer. So it's a tubular bilayer, open tube. In the presence of the fuel, the fuel decomposes, give you this oxygen bubble that gives you the bubble truss. So this is a bubble truss, very efficient. As you'll see in the video, they swim over 1,000 body lengths per second. So extremely fast. These are time-lapse images, 200 milliseconds, as you can see in the next video. See, the oxygen bubble puts them, and we can navigate them magnetically by the inner nickel layer. We can also combine them for a collective action, collective behavior to do more complex tasks. Here we have three of these motors swimming in the fuel, Oxygen bubble can do more complex biomedical and environmental application. We also can functionalize them with different receptors, like this antibody for a cancer cell. And they can swim and do diagnostic in microchip device. So, and we use also a DARPA project to decontaminate anthrax spore and other nerve agents. So we put uh, all the receptor chemistry on the surface. And they swim in the microchip system, as you can see here. The rocket, this is a one micrometer channel. Go to the sample, can navigate them in the intersection of the microchannel and capture and transport the target, for example, cancer cell. This is a cancer cell. We have antibody receptor. So capture and transport the, ant the cancer cell. This is in blood. Again, selectively pick and transport the pancreatic cancer cell. So this is some uh, biomedical application. This is the first example of using nanomachine in the living organism. It just featured in the B BBC last month. So this is now motor swimming the acids, in the acid in the stomach. These are zinc-based motor that in the presence of the gastric acid, the HCL, give you hydrogen bubble. And then we study distribution, the toxicity of this directly in the stomach. and cargo delivery, and you can see the video of them swimming in the gastric acid of the stomach using this hydrogen bubble and carrying cargo, in this case, gold nanoparticle. In our DARPA project, we use it for to accelerate detoxification of chemical agent and bioagent. These are motor coated with the titanium dioxide, which is photocatalytic layer. They swim by this magnesium layer in seawater, and they can detoxify rapidly. Here they also can go and detoxify this nerve agent that we have in Syria. Just this bubble propulsion give you accelerated detoxification. And the next, uh, last video will be using them to remove oil uh, droplet for uh, oil spill. So we'll start with this. This is the photocatalytic motor swimming in seawater and do the catalytic using the titanium dioxide. Next example will be the 
one with the super hydrophobic layer, we call them them with it and removing the oil droplets. So you see one motor can carry multiple oil droplets and remove it from the oil spill. And next, we will welcome you to the center of wearable sensor, the time the director. This is the first agile center that they didn't talk. And this is one of the grand challenges of the center, to develop a lab on the body, to go from a lab to the skin, complete lab. And if you visit my lab, you'll be welcomed by this mannequin, which have 20 different sensors from head to toe, some of them on the textile, you see D, some of them on the underwear, some of them we have a forensic finger. This is for security applications, swiping for explosive and gunshot residue. We make them artistic looking. This is the pH, smiley tattoo, pH sensor. And you can see we can also stretch it and it keeps smiling and we combine the electronic with our collaborator in the center from the ECE department, bioengineering department. So we do a wide range of sensors. And the unique to UCSD is that it's not only the vital sign, the steps and calorie. We measure chemistry. We measure chemical marker, biomarker, lot of glucose, lactate, electrolyte, metabolite, all to provide chemical information on top of the vital signs that you do with steps and uh, distance. So one recent example will focus on this glucose tattoo that replacing the finger stick glucose uh, sensor. So this is again a tattoo, you'll see the videos that do complete non-invasive monitoring of glucose it combined the what we call iontophoretic extraction of glucose from under the skin with the sensing. So it's a two-step process. In five minutes, you extract the glucose to the surface after the big meal, and then you measure it, and you get what we call electrochemical sensing. So this uh, video will show you we printing. This is printable sensor on a tattoo paper. These are the multiple electrodes. We call it PDD, plate, detect, and dispose. So instead of the finger stick four or five times a day, you don't need to finger stick the blood anymore. You just place it after the meal, do the measurement, and dispose it. The same price, very low cost, very reproducible. And you do the two steps of the extraction and the detection in a completely non-invasive uh, fashion. So this is one application of our tattoo sensor in the wearable sensor. We're also addressing the energy challenge. This uh, sensor platform needs a lot of energy. You don't want to carry a uh, big battery. So we try to harvest energy directly from the body. This is the UC tattoo. You see, these are two electrodes. This is the anode of the biofuel cell. C is for the cathode, oxygen cathode. We power energy directly from lactate in the sweat. So we not only use UC for University of California, we use it as a sensor. Here is another biofuel cell on textile powering the watch. This is now on the end band, multiple biofuel cell that can again harvest energy directly from sweat. Or we also do printable flexible battery. So I think this is uh, the end of the story. This is the UC tattoo and this is the nanomachine. We welcome you to visit us. Thank you very much.